They're pretty hard to miss when you're driving by. You've probably thought, that's where our water comes from, and you're mostly right. But these structures have another but very yet important use, and thanks to your taxpayer dollars, you'll see more of them soon. We've watched them take their place high in the sky, elevated storage tanks, or more commonly known as water towers. One at 104th in Milwaukee, the other at 50th in Indiana. They're sites of concrete and piping. Like many of you, we wanted to know how do these towers even work. So, we went in one. From the bottom to the top, 183 feet. I'm standing inside looking up, it'll be 133 feet to the bottom of the bowl. An 18-story structure with 2 million gallons of water stored at the top. One of the things that these do is help maintain system pressure throughout the city. When the water level fills up in the tank, when there's pressure is low, then we will fill up the tank. And so kind of in off-peak hours in the middle of the night when system usage is low. And these altitude valves are based on levels in the tank itself. And so when the pressure is right, it'll let water go into the bowl. And when it needs to release pressure into the system, that's what these two fluctuate based on the water level in the tank. And so it's a pretty simple system. But not with a pretty low price tag. So the cost of these is $5.3 million a piece. And the two you see today aren't the only ones going up. 30 University, 87th and Avenue P, and North and Quaker near the Clovis Highway will all have water towers within the next five years or so. We're a growing city and the Texas Commission on Environmental Quality requires a certain amount of overhead storage based on the size of your city. Basically some of the models that we've run is that these tanks will pay for themselves in five to seven years simply based on energy savings. And so it's, it's an incredible usage of energy and a benefit to the city in the long run that these tanks will provide.